Hi everybody, we have a project that has something to do with something that I like almost as much as art, if not more. Do you know what it is? Rocks. Rocks? rocks. We love rocks. I've got some of my favorite rocks here. This one, you can see that it has all these bands of colors in it and sometimes it has holes. This rock is called an agate and you can sometimes find them around here but mostly they're found over in northeastern Minnesota in our state over by Lake Superior. What kind of rock do you have? Oh, you've got, I don't know what this one's called, if they're both polished rocks just like my agate. This one's a uh, polished piece of hematite that's iron. What's your favorite kind of rock in your handy lane? Ooh, hold that one up close so we can get a good look out. Now that one is kind of ugly on the outside. Can you turn it around? But if you crack that rock open, can you turn it around again? That's called a geode. That has crystals or minerals that grow inside it. That's really cool. And that one's been dyed a dark purple color. I've got a geode here in my hand. When you crack it open, it has these really pretty white crystals inside of it. So I thought we would learn a little bit more about crystals and geodes and rocks and then maybe try and draw some crystals. How does that sound? Sound like a plan? I want to share with you a little science experiment we did at home. We found the recipe online, but I also have it here in this book to show you. We decided to make a geode out of an eggshell. We wanted to grow crystals inside, so we used a little bit of glue and Epsom salt to start the seed crystals in the inside of cleaned and dried out eggshells. The next day, when the glue had dried, we mixed some more hot water and Epsom salt and a little food coloring and poured them inside the eggshells and we're letting them sit to evaporate. Sometimes crystals can grow through evaporation, like salt and seawater. Sometimes crystals will grow from hot lava cooling underground or above ground. The longer the crystal has time to grow, the bigger the crystals will be. So we're gonna let our crystals sit for a few days until all of the water has evaporated. You might recognize some of the names of some of these minerals and see some of the crystal shapes in them. Iron pyrite, also known as fool's gold, is a really, really common type of mineral you can find. Not all minerals make crystals, since not all crystals you can see, some of them are very, very tiny. Some of the more rare types of crystals are called gemstones. They're known for their rarity and their clarity and their beauty. Sometimes crystals can grow really, really big and sometimes they can be really, really small. Did you know that Frozen water in snow and ice form are crystals because they're solid and they have a very definite pattern or shape. Salt and sugar can also make crystals. We're going to take a look at crystals that have specific shapes to them and we're going to practice drawing some of the crystals inspired by some of the crystals that we see in our books and some of the crystals that we have around us. This page is interesting. It talks about how some geodes are cracked open and people have found living frogs and metal inside them. So we have a box of minerals and some of them have crystals in them that you can see the shapes really well. In order for something to be considered a crystal, it has to be solid and it has to have a definite shape or a pattern shape to it. Those molecules that line up make a specific shape to them, and the shapes or the sides of the crystals are called facets or faces. Sometimes crystals can be parallelograms or like thin sheets of paper. Sometimes they have many sides that look like um, prisms. So we did looked at all the crystals that we could find in our rock boxes that we had gotten at home, and now we're going to practice drawing them. We're going to practice drawing a quartz crystal or a six-sided crystal. To do that, draw a rectangle and off one side draw two short diagonal lines. Off the other side, draw two short diagonal lines, connect them, give the crystal a hat or a point, and then draw a V or upside down V connecting the, the lines to make the faces. You can do that at the bottom of your crystal too if you'd like. 
Now I'm gonna draw a top of a gem. We're gonna make it six-sided again. Draw a six-sided shape inside and connect all of the points to the next point outside of it. Another type of crystal could be like a diamond. Go ahead and draw a V. Make a trapezoid on the top so it kind of looks like an ice cream cone. Draw a small V inside it and then decorate it with any kind of lines you want. You can color in the crystals however you would like. Now another way to draw crystals is to draw them looking like they're growing out of the ground or like the inside of a geode. This one's a little bit more tricky, but if you take your time, you can do it. We're gonna draw a line for the ground or the inside of the geode. We're gonna draw two diagonal lines and a hat on top of them to make it look like an ice cream cone. Draw an upside down V coming from the point at the top. And then from those lines, you're gonna make another V going all the way down to the bottom. It's almost like all the lines on the bottom connect together. Now we want more crystals to grow out of here. So we're going to draw more of these crystals. Draw a V, give it a hat, draw the upside down V to show the faces or the sides of the crystal and keep going. When we decided to color our crystals, I thought about the color wheel and how we could use it best to make our crystals look like they are sort of see-through or transparent like a gemstone. So we use the color wheel and I'm using colors that are next door neighbors or analogous colors. So I've got red, orange, and yellow because they're neighbors or analogous on the color wheel, green, yellow green, and a blue green, or different kinds of blues. Have fun with your colors. If you want to make a rainbow crystal, go for it. <laughs>